video, we're going to look at building linear models from real world applications or real world scenarios. For each scenario, we're going to assume that it describes a linear model. Then we're going to declare the variables, write a linear model, and make sure the final answer is written in the corresponding variables that we declared. If we need to, we're going to re-index the time in the problem. Here's the first scenario. In 2015, the population of egret is 1900 and it is decreasing at a rate of 150 people per year. All right, so there seem to be two quantities in this problem. There is the population of egret and the year that we're measuring that population. Of those two quantities, which one is the one that we have control over? And the answer to that is the year. So the year is going to be our independent variable and the population of egret is going to be our dependent variable. Now we don't like to use time written in the whole years. We usually index them from the beginning of the problem. In this case, that would be 2015. So let's let T equal the number of years since 2015. And let's let P, usually use capital P, be the population of egret. In case you're wondering, we usually let capital P be population or profit and lowercase p stand for the price if you're in a business problem. That first phrase in the problem, in 2015, the population of egret is 1900. That's a pair of data. So we know that our linear model passes through the point and our points are gonna be represented as t comma p. So it passes through the point zero comma 1900 because 2015 is zero years since 2015. Now we also know that the population is decreasing at a rate of 150 people per year. That decreasing rate of 150 people per year, that is the slope. And the slope, lowercase m, is negative 150. So what do we have? We have a slope and we have a point. Specifically, the point we have is the y-intercept. So we can actually go back to the equation y equals mx plus b, change to our variables, so our dependent variable instead of y, it's p, and our independent variable instead of x, it's t. And now let's insert the y-intercept of 1900 into the b value and the slope, negative 150, into the m value. That gives us the equation p of t, equals negative 150t plus 1900. If you wanna make sure you've done it right, you can always jump over to Desmos and give the graph a try. Now, when I put this graph in, if I'm in the home screen of Desmos, I'm not gonna see anything yet. And that's because the starting population is 1900. I need to get the Y axis to be much, much bigger. I'm going to go into that wrench menu on the right hand side of the screen and change the Y axis to be something more like 2000. Now I can see a graph that's linear with a y-intercept of 1900 and it's decreasing, so the slope is negative, that should be correct. And if this decrease in population continues, somewhere between t equals 12 and t equals 13, egret will be no more. Next problem. A forklift was purchased for $25,000 in 2017 and after five years, the value will be zero we have two quantities in the problem. We have the value of the forklift starting at 25,000 and we have the years starting with 2017. The years is going to be our independent variable and let's index that from 2017. So we'll let T equal the years since 2017 and let's use capital V for the value of the forklift. If we had a point, it would be represented by T comma V. Now let's reread the problem. We have a forklift that was purchased for $25,000 in 2017. That's actually a set of values that makes a point. It makes the point zero comma 25,000. And after five years, the value will be zero. That makes another point at t equals five, the value is zero, that's five comma zero. Now we have two points and one of them is the y-intercept, the 25,000 is the y-intercept, so that's great, but we still need the slope. So we're gonna calculate the slope first. It's the change in dependent, which is v, over the change in independent, which is t. So our slope 
is delta V over delta T. Now notice I have written the points vertically to each other to make the subtraction easier. So I'm going to do delta V first, which is 0 minus 25,000, and then delta T second, which is 5 minus 0. That gives us negative 25,000 over 5, or negative 5,000. There's our slope, and we also have a y-intercept. So we can actually go back to slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. We need to change our variables to the current variables. y is the dependent variable, in this case v, and x is the independent variable, in this case t. So that gives us v equals mt plus b. And what we're going to replace in here is the y-intercept, b, which is 25,000, and the slope, m, which is negative 5,000. So we'll have v of t equals negative 5,000 t plus 25,000. And again, to verify that this equation is correct, you could jump over to Desmos, graph it, and then make sure that at time 0 you see 25,000 on the y-axis, and at time 5 you see 0 on the y-axis. At this point, I'd like you to pause this video and try the third and fourth scenarios on your own. It's really important that you try this on your own. It's super easy to watch somebody else do these problems, but I will not be there for you when you take a quiz or exam on this stuff. So I really recommend you pause and give these a try. Even if you only get a start at each problem, you'll have learned something. You'll have learned where you're getting stuck. Okay, hopefully you've given them a try. In number three, we have the population of a small rural town is 240 people and it's not changing. Now it might be a little bit tricky to figure out what the variables are here. All we really have is a population. Now because it's not changing, what we're saying is it's always 240. Now if the population is always 240, that's like flatlining on a graph. The not changing part really represents time. It's saying over time the population is not changing. So if we were going to declare two variables, we would say this not changing is really some kind of time. Measure it in whatever you'd like. So let's just say t equals time. We don't really have a designation for whether it's years or months. If you'd like, we can just pick one, time and years. And let's let capital P be the population. Now, not changing, it's actually representing the slope. It's saying that the population is not increasing, the population is not decreasing, it's staying exactly the same. And what that tells us is that the slope is actually zero. Now, if the slope is zero, what kind of line do we have? It's one of those edge cases, right? It's a horizontal line. And a horizontal line would normally be represented by y equals some number. In this case, it's the population equals some number. It's p equals some number. And the number is 240. So the equation is p of t equals 240. That one was tricky because it was one of those edge cases. Last problem. At the end of April 2017, an app had 2.5 monthly active users, those are MAUs, and at the end of July 2018, the app had 5.4 MAUs. We've got two variables in this problem. We've got time and we have monthly active users. Let's go ahead and define that. And notice that we have the time in April and July, which are not equally spaced in terms of years. So we are going to have to take into account the month when we write out our time values. Let's just let t be the number of years since 2017. Now I'm choosing 2017 because that's really the start of our problem. I don't want to start in April of 2017 because that makes the counting really hard. So I'm going to start at the beginning of 2017. My other variable is monthly active users. Let's use U, capital U, for monthly active users. Oh, and I just saw a typo in here. This should be 2.5 million monthly active users. 2.5 monthly active users would be kind of weird. So this is monthly active users and let's say in millions. Any points for our scenario will be represented by T 
comma u, time being the independent variable and u being the dependent variable. In this case, we're really being given two points. We have the end of April 2017 and 2.5 million users. And then we have the end of July 2018 and 5.4 million MAUs. Again, the million is missing in this problem, but it should be there. Let's write those two points. April 2017 is four twelfths of the way through the year. 2017 would be t equals zero, so we need to have t equals zero plus four twelfths, or zero plus one third. That's going to be 0 0.3 repeating. Let's just go to two decimal places here. 0 0.33 comma 2.5. There's my first point. And then the end of July 2018, that would be time is one. And then the end of the July would be seven twelfths of the way through the year. So one plus seven twelfths. And that's 0.583 repeating. If we want to be accurate, maybe let's go out to three decimal places. 0 0.333 comma 2.5 and 1.712 comes out 0.583 repeating. So one plus that would be 1.58. And let's go to three decimal places. Let's actually go back to that previous one and add a three. So 0 0.333 comma 2.5 and 1.583 comma 5.4 million MAUs. All right, we have two points. That's all we've got. We're gonna have to find the slope. Luckily, we've lined up those points vertically. Should be easy to subtract. In this case, our slope is the change in MAUs, or the delta U over the change in time. That's 5.4 minus 2.5 over 1.583 minus 0.5. 3, 3, 3. That's 2.9 over 1.25. Let's go ahead and do that division. So 2.9 divided by 1.25 gives us 2.32. So our slope is 2.32. Now we have the slope and we have two points. We're going to have to use point slope form. The normal equation for point slope form is y minus y1 equals lowercase m times x minus x1. In this case, we've got different variables. So I'm going to write u minus u1 equals lowercase m times the quantity t minus t1. And we're going to fill in the m, the u1, and the t1. Let's use the top point, 0.333 comma 2.5 to do that. We now have u minus 2.5 equals 2.32 times t minus 0 0.333. Now let's just clean that up a bit. Let's do the distribution. Leave the left side alone. u minus 2.5 equals 2.32t minus, and now let's do 2.32 times 0.333, which gives us 0.773. Finally, we need to get the u by itself. Let's add 2.5 to both sides. So u minus 2.5 plus 2.5 equals 2.32t minus 0 0.773 plus 2.5. Added 2.5 to both sides. That gives us u equals 2.32t. And then we need to do negative 0.773 plus 2.5, which gives us positive 1.727. If we wanted to write it using proper function notation, let's just write it as u of t equals 2.32t plus 1.727. Now we should be able to graph that function against the two points we identified in Desmos and make sure that our equation is correct. There are lots of nitpicky decimals in there, so it might be a good idea to check. In Desmos, I put in u of t equals 2.32t plus 1.727, the equation we found, and then the points that we had at the beginning of the problem, parentheses 0.333 comma 2.5, close parentheses, and then parentheses 1.583 comma 5.4, close parentheses. We can see that the line is an increasing line with a y-intercept of 1.727. It increases with a slope of 2.32, and most importantly, it does pass through the two points we plotted. Let's recap. When you're building a linear model, it's really important to declare your variables first, figure out which one is independent and which one is dependent. I would even write a point that represents those two variables. Then interpret what you've been given in the problem. Do you have points in the problem? Are you given a slope in the problem? Write down all of that information. If you aren't given a slope, you're probably going to have to find one. Then you should be able to take the information you have and put it into one of our line equations to come out with a model. Make sure when you do that, 
that you change the model with y and x to the model with the variables you're using in the problem.